we start having these storms for a while now. In the last couple of years, two or three years, or something like that, uh, it's, it's been kind of bad and seemed like getting worse. During my 65 years, I've seen about uh, 5,200 feet of uh, my walking area disappearing. Uh, that's from uh, wind, flood erosion. There we go. You see that? Shishmaref first contacted us to try to get some help from our emergency watershed protection program. And we looked at the magnitude of the erosion on the beach at Shishmaref and determined that we could not design a treatment that would keep them safe. At that point, we suggested that the Shishmaref Erosion and Relocation Coalition write a letter requesting help under our Conservation Technical Assistance Program. Sarachaf Island that Shishmaref is located on is being eroded away. And there is a hypothesis, a very strong hypothesis, that the sea level is rising. There's been a long history of trying to block the natural processes that are going on there. And we decided as a group of technical specialists that we weren't interested in trying to take that route, but we were more interested in trying to help the village choose a sensible place to relocate. What our reports have allowed Shishmaref to do is twofold. It has allowed Shishmaref to focus their energies in the village on deciding, hope, probably once and for all, where it is they're going to move to. And that, that was no small feat, either technically or socially. The other thing that our reports have allowed Shishmaref to do is to engage their representatives and their congressmen, show them that they have went through a logical, documented process, and that this isn't just a whim that was decided at the coffee shop. This is a formal, thought-out strategy about where to move to and why this would be the best place to move to. We're a group of people that have always adjusted to the conditions of our lives. We hope to continue the working relationship with NRCS, which we feel that it has been a good, positive working relationship for us, and, and I hope for NRCS. WIP is one of our farm bill programs that the NRCS administers. WIP stands for the Wildlife Habitat Incentives Program. Essentially, it's a program that uh, provides opportunities for private landowners to install conservation practices for the enhancement, restoration, or creation of wildlife habitat on private lands. Primarily, eligibility for the WIP program can be any private landowner. The entity that makes the application for WIP has to be able to show us that they have control of that land unit during the length of the WIP contract. And a WIP contract can be anywhere from 5 to 15 years in length. Last year, for instance, just to show the level of interest in Alaska, we had $200,000 worth of financial assistance to allocate or to obligate, and uh, we had over uh, $2.3 million worth of requests. So it's an extremely popular program in the state of Alaska. The history of uh, Willow Creek Resort is, goes back a long ways. It was actually started back in the 60s. I found permits from the uh, Corps of Engineers for dredging for the uh, boat launch down below as far as 67. When they put the new bridge in, it, they put in big concrete pillars and the concrete pillars redirected the water they put a bunch of riffraff underneath of it, which we know now speeds up the water. And that all put a lot of stress on the creek here in this whole area. The wall that was here before was a log retaining wall. And the logs were falling in the water. Nobody would give us a permit to fix it because they wanted the retaining wall out. It was really becoming a safety issue for us. It was a nice way to clean the whole thing up and make the bank normal. I guess I was complaining quite a bit to the, to the borough, to the, to the state of Alaska biologists, because we needed to fix this retaining wall. It was, it was a danger to the people here. Uh, it was deteriorating fast. 
So they said, well, go see this agency. Then I'd go see them. Then go see the other agency. Go see them. And finally, we got together with the WIP program. And uh, once we got that and got the terms nailed down pretty good, it, it went very smoothly. After reviewing the project, we decided on using root wads as the initial revetment. They're placed at stream channel elevation is slightly below. They provide the bulk and the structural stability for the project. That prevents him from losing a lot more land and gives us a good foundation to work upon. After that, we added a couple of soil wraps, which are simply soil wrapped in a, a coir fabric. And that actually builds up the bank, gives us the elevation that we need to get back up to ground level. In our spurs and those, we planted willows. They'll be more of the long-term solution. Once they root, take hold, that provides the bank stability. It provides overhanging cover for the fish. Above that, it was seeded and sod mats were placed to prevent overland erosion. And then he, on his own and with help from Fish and Wildlife, built a light penetrating walkway that protects all the vegetation and all the measures. While he still had his access to the river, they could still fish, they could still see, and the project itself was still protected. In Farley's case, uh, he wanted to do most of the work himself. He did actually collect the root wads and install them and install the soil wrap layers and the willow plantings behind the root wads. Fish habitat was immediate. As soon as we put the root wads in the water, you could see fry. They were looking for cover. The fry was looking for cover the minute we put them in. So as we just built this thing up here, now you can go along. You can, in the spring, you can go from root wad to root wad to root wad and just look down in the water and see the little fry everywhere. In the case of the WIP program, for instance, uh, uh, many rural Alaskans uh, uh, are dependent upon wildlife. The uh, subsistence user would have a direct benefit in relationship to the, uh, the enhancement of that habitat for moose and other species. The Emergency Watershed Protection Program was authorized along with the then Soil Conservation Service's Small Watershed Protection Program. And what it was, was a way to respond to emergencies, to sudden watershed impairments in concert with other federal agencies. We lived on this property for a long, long time. And we thought that the river wasn't coming our way and there's so much land out there we figured we had all of our lifetime to be here. Well we had uh, a couple of years ago um, a major blowout of a glacial moraine that was uh, obviously very highly water saturated and, uh, and that let go catastrophically one morning early. The actual blowout resulted in a hole up West Creek that was uh, uh, roughly one cubic mile. Much of that material ended up down in the Dye Valley. It was really scary. All we had mostly in our yard was groundwater. We had cabled many trees off here to stem erosion and they'd been doing a pretty good job for the last couple of years and they were all gone. It cleaned everything off of the bank. It took other standing trees that the uh, downed trees that were cabled to, took them right out and the heavy load of gravel that was brought down West Creek by that lateral moraine collapse, that just built up the bars and rivers so much it, it uh, diverted the course of the river and then it was aiming right at our new house. We knew we had to do something. and.